Have you felt the pain and the throbbing and the heat and the pressure of an earache? Or have you been the parent that's like woken up in the night because you hear your child crying and you find them and they're just crying and they're pulling on their ears and they're having this painful ear infection and they're all worked up and everyone's tired and you need help right away and that's a real stressful situation. And if you've been in that situation, you'll want to stick around because today we're going to be talking all about how to relieve earaches. My name is Maria Chaudhry. I'm so glad you're here. I'm a midwife and an herbalist and the creator of Birthsong Botanicals. And today we have a big announcement because we have a new product that I'm super excited for and it feels really close to my heart. And as this video goes on, you'll see why. But we have a new part, a new member of our children's family and our children's collection. It is for the whole family, but it fits really nice in this group. It's called Earache Relief Oil. I'm super excited to have that and offer that with you. So we're live, but I wanna clear this up right away. You know, I'm a midwife, I am a herbalist, I'm not a doctor, I don't look like a doctor, act like a doctor, treat like a doctor, none of this is intended to treat, diagnose, or cure, but really it's intended to support you, to give you information, to give you like props and cheerlead you as you go through, as you navigate when your child is sick, because I've been there, I've had a sick child, I've been a sick child, and we have we have ways to help equip you so you can make really good decisions because earaches are actually pretty serious. If they're left untreated or they're managed inappropriately, they can lead to permanent hearing loss or even deafness. And we, no one wants that, right? So this is live. I'm in the front of the camera and Heaven's behind the camera. And so I can't see the comments and I can't see the, the questions and where people are. But just because I can't see it doesn't mean that I don't want you to interact and let us know where you're watching from and post questions. And when there's pauses and when there's sections and it seems appropriate, Heaven might ask your question. And if not, we'll answer them at the end in the comments. Hmm. Okay. So it seems pretty quiet out there, so let's just get started. I wanted to let you know that we're in the midst of this whole cold and flu series. We started with fevers and we made a series of videos all about fevers and how to understand fevers and what fevers are and how to treat fevers with hydrotherapy and with herbs. And there'll be a link to that in the description. And then, the, and then we progress to coughs, so upper respiratory infections, sinus congestion, lung congestion. And we did a whole series of videos about how to relieve a cough and how to care for a cough. And what's inevitable, what happens next, is after you have a fever and you have a cough, more than likely an ear infection comes up. So this video is all about how to treat and relieve ear infections also want to remind you that we have an ebook called Herbs for Kids. It's all about supporting them, bolstering them up, winterizing, weatherproofing them for the cough, cold, and flu season. And you can download that. The link will be in the description. It's free. And when you download that, you'll immediately be enrolled in the Herbs for Kids course. And every day you'll get a lesson. It's easy. It's not overwhelming. But every day you'll get a lesson. And you'll learn quite a bit about herbs. You'll get a bunch of recipes on how to make your own elderberry syrup, your own clear breath tea, throat lozenges, earache oil, all sorts of things. And you'll learn about my favorite herbs for children and why I wrote this all in the first place. So you definitely want to download that right away and get that. It's going to be a wonderful resource for you. Hmm. We have three people joining us on Facebook, and we have two joining us on Instagram. Yay! One of them is Paula Hartgrave. Hey, Paula. How are you? Good. Well, I'm happy that you're all here, 
I mean, and Paula knows she's a mom and she has children, and I bet some of them have had earaches. It's kind of a perfect way to segue in. I'm just going to give myself permission right off the bat that I'm going to look at my notes because I have a lot of information I want to share with you, and I just don't want to miss anything. You know, I read this study that said 95% of children from age 0 to 6 years old have had earaches. 95% of them. And the reason for that is, is because when children are young, they're growing and they're developing and their ear canals aren't fully formed. They're not fully formed until they're like three, four, maybe five years old. And so until then, the, the ears are not formed so they don't drain really well. And so since they don't drain really well, the moisture gets caught in there and then lo and behold, bacteria grows and then you have an earache or an ear infection. So ear infections can be caused from viruses, they can be caused from bacteria, but a whole lot of them are caused from food allergies and, and other environmental allergies like smoke and dust and cats and animals. So ear infections, like I mentioned in the very beginning, they can be just acute pop up or they can be chronic but they can really what I want you to know is they can actually be really severe and if they're mistreated or mismanaged or poorly understood then they can lead to long-term consequences which is hearing loss and then deafness and we don't no one wants that right so we want to be really vigilant and look for the first signs of an ear infection and you want to take care of it right away. So the first signs of ear infections typically are going to be a fever and then a runny nose, a stuffy nose, congestion. Those are the first signs. And then the other telltale sign is their children will be pulling on their ears. They'll have ear pain. And then you know for sure it's a full-blown ear infection when they wake up in the night and they're screaming and they're pulling on their ears and that that has to be treated immediately and you want to treat it immediately with your herbs and it's a good time maybe not at two o'clock in the morning but in general it's a good time to reach out to get good counsel and good advice from natural care providers and from your pediatrician okay Today when I film these live videos, I film like this video and I practice beforehand so I have it all worked out and then it comes live and it's like I feel like I've already gone through it all so now I feel like I'm starting over from scratch. But I want to talk to you about these ear infections and the types of ear infections. So you have external otitis, and then you have otitis media, meaning middle ear infection, or you have secretion, secretory otitis and that is also called ear glue so let's break this down external otitis is from the eardrum it involves the ear canal and to where it goes outside it's from the eardrum to the canal to the outside that's external external otitis will you'll know that you're having an external ear infection when you pull on the ear lobe and it hurts more. This, this type of ear infection is going to throb. This type of ear infection, you'll have a fever, you'll have discharge, you'll have pain, you might even have just a, maybe a little bit of dizziness. But when you look in and see, what you'll see is you'll see the eardrum and you'll see all the fluid is in front of the eardrum. You might not even see the eardrum very well because there's so much fluid in front of it. And so this fluid or this mucus or this congestion in front of the eardrum might interfere with hearing, but this is an external ear infection. And then you have in you have middle ear infection. So this is the classic otitis media. And when you look at the otitis media, this is going to be when you look at the ear and you look inside, what you're going to see is the eardrum and behind the eardrum is where the fluid is, right? So when you look at the eardrum, it could be red, it can be bulging, um, the whole area could be swollen and inflamed, 
when you look in, you could see that bulging eardrum, but you could also see a hole, a perforation in the eardrum. You could see blood. You can see bloody discharge. You can see thick mucus discharge. This child probably has an upper respiratory infection, a bunch of congestion in their nose and in their throat, a sore throat, and they're having a cough, and they're having a fever. So otitis media, middle ear infections, there are two types. You have a, an acute and you have a chronic. So an acute ear infection, like I just described, everything about that I just described, that's an acute ear infection, and that those are primarily caused by viruses. Those are viral infections. Now, a chronic ear infection, when you look at it, it's going to look really similar because the fluid is behind the eardrum. When you look at it, you're going to see the bulging eardrum. You might see the perforated eardrum. You might see the blood. You might see the mucus. They're going to have the same sort of things, the fever, the dizziness, the vertigo, the ringing in their ears. They might have hearing loss. They're going to have all these things. The only difference is the chronic ear infection is a result of a poorly managed acute infection. So you had acute infection from a virus, it wasn't managed properly, it was misunderstood, wasn't treated properly, and so then you have a reoccurring one, and then it reoccurs again, and it reoccurs again because it's not quite clear what's happening, not quite clear how to fix it, and so then it becomes chronic, right? Those are chronic middle ear infections. And then you have this secretory ear infection called ear glue. And that's a little bit different. They are chronic ear infections that are most common with children. The difference is when you look into this ear, what you see, instead of the eardrum bulging out and being up and puffing toward you, it's concave, it's sucked in. It's sucked in so much that you can almost see the malice, incus, and stapes behind it, right? And there's a lot of fluid behind it. And the discharge in this ear is really thick and really yellow and sticky. And very likely this child has temporary hearing loss or has hearing loss because of the, the thickness of the discharge. This is coming from an allergy that hasn't been resolved and it is perpetuated and become prolonged and now there's an allergy and a bacterial infection. So that is, that is the type of infections that I had. Those, in those infections can be really serious and those are the ones that are more likely that are going to leave permanent hearing loss and hearing damage. Heaven wants to show you something. So we have a question from Mariah Shelton. Oh. Do you guys make a specific earache tincture? Oh, we do. Actually, we're, we're super excited. It's brand new. Brand we're bringing new. it out. This is the first time you're seeing it. You're the first person to see it. Like, boom, right now. Ah, this is so exciting. Earache relief oil. I'm going to get all into and share all about what the herbs are and why they're in there and how to use it and everything about that. Thank you for asking that. It's long overdue, isn't it? I've been needing to make that for a long time. Nice. So we've talked about the types of ear infections, and now let's talk a little bit about how to treat them, how to feel better. Okay. Let's see. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I'm just going to look here. So let's go back to examining the ear, and so you can know how to examine the ear most of the time I've examined ears has been my child laying his head down on my lap and then I look in. I have with me back at the house and I didn't bring it today, I should have, an otoscope. You can get this otoscope at Walgreens for like $12. It's easy to get and it has a pin light on it. And so they lay their head down on your lap and you, you gently move and pull on their earlobe. Remember, when you pull on their earlobe, and if that pulling creates more pain, you immediately know, okay, this is an external ear infection. This external ear infection, moisture has been trapped in there. That's, called the, that's caused the infection. It's also called swimmer's ear. That's what swimmer's ear is. When you're examining, 
I'm, I've kind of reset some of this, but I'm going to repeat. Just use your eyes and use your powers of observation and look and see. Does it look swollen? What color are the tissues? What does the eardrum look like? Is it bulging? Is it red? Is it sucked in? Is it perforated? What color is the sebum? What color is the mucus? Is it bloody, blood tinged? Is it light yellow? Is it orange? Is it thick yellow, gluey mucus? Right? Please don't, I know it's, you're tempted to go in there and do something to clean it out. Be super mindful of just cleaning out the, the edge, the external, but don't go too deep in there to clean it out. It's super sensitive and you could lodge something in deeper. So please don't stick anything in the ear. Another part of your examination is you want to see if they can hear well. So rubbing your fingers and your thumb together in front of their ear, both ears will help you determine if they're having hearing loss. Right here, I'll just tell you, if you're seeing and if your child's having or you're experiencing and when you're examining and you're seeing a perforated eardrum, these are the symptoms. You're going to see the hole, potentially. You're going to see blood or bloody discharge. There's going to be a lot of pain, like a, like a severe pain, or it's going to be followed by a severe pain and then sudden relief. That's probably the rupture of the eardrum. Or you're going to have a sense of vertigo or dizziness, ringing in your ears, a fever, and just lots and lots of congestion and pain. So if you have those symptoms, those are signs of a perforated eardrum, and you should probably just go get that checked out with your care provider. The other reason you should ever go and get an ear ache and ear infection checked out is if you've been trying all these natural remedies that I'm about to get into, and they're not working, and they're not working, and they're not working, please go get that taken care of and checked out. Okay, so let's go into these remedies. So, my first approach with the ear infections and earache is going to always be to look to herbs. And when I look to herbs, I'm going to just do it in this order. I'm going to tend to be a person that just like cover my bases to start at the top, go to the bottom. So right off the bat, there is an infection. So I'm going to look for antimicrobial or antibacterial type herbs, especially if it's accompanied with a fever, right? So those herbs that I'm going to look to, I'm going to look to echinacea, I'm going to look to organ grape root and yarrow. We have a blend for that. That's called Children's Immune Boost. It's an overall, overarching, antimicrobial, antibacterial herbal tincture that is good for fevers and overall infections. By looking to these antimicrobial and antibacterial uh, herbs, I'm talking about taking them internally. You can take them internally by drinking teas. We have our teas here, our lung support teas. You can take them internally with tinctures. Those are great ways to get the inside your body. And then we have to address all this congestion because the earache follows a runny nose, a stuffy nose, and a cough. So we have to address that. So we're going to look to decongesting herbs. So decongesting herbs, common ones that we've talked about in our videos a lot, it's going to be elderberry and thyme. And so we have an, a decongestant tincture, which is children's respiratory support. It's blended with elderberry and thyme. And that's really great for clearing up any lung congestion or sinus congestion. And then another way to clear up congestion is to do a bath, a steam, or a gargle. And that's with children's healing herb bath. And in our cough series, I go into great detail and depth on how to care for a cold and how to care for congestion. So I encourage you to watch that because there's so much more to be said that I want to just stay on the earaches. So those are internal applications. And now we need to, and oh, before I go further, I want to say another thing. When a 
child's having an earache, they're in a lot of pain, right? And they might not be able to sleep well and they have a lot of tension and they might be actually stressed and anxious and nervous about what's happening, right? So they might need to calm down and find their center. So relaxing Nervine herbs like chamomile and catnip can help relieve some of the pain and some of the tension and help them settle and help them relax and make them a little bit more compliant for you to do your, uh, add your ear oil and help them sleep primarily. The healing power of sleep, we all know how restorative that is. And so anything we can do to get them to be able to sleep better, that's for the win. So Nervines, you can also do those Nervines in teas or in tinctures and then also this bath that heaven just showed you that's another really relaxing nervine to help with the pain so then comes the earache relief oil now we want to do a topical application okay so think of earache relief oil because its intent is to help relieve pain to help remove the infection and clear out the mucus and clear out the blockages. That's what it's intended for. So it's blended with mullein flowers, coctus root, garlic bulb, and um, arnica flowers. And then it's infused in extra virgin olive oil. So this is an external topical application. So you want to drop three to five warm not hot drops of oil into the ear. Let's talk about this right here before I get into the properties. You have to use a little, if you're giving it to yourself and giving it to someone else, you don't want to contaminate your dropper, right? You have an infection here. So you don't want the glass dropper to touch the ears. So you have to pull a little Jedi mom trick when you're getting this this oil into the ears and then are also into yourself just if you do touch your skin not a huge deal but just alcohol swab it off let it dry before you stick it back in the bottle because you don't want to treat the other ear and then the other family members and cross contaminate things so that's a really important thing another thing is I said warm not hot so hot's not going to work and cold is not going to be good so you can warm it up by sticking it in a cup of warm water or when you're running around doing other things, getting taking care of your child, you can stick it in your armpit and your body heat will help warm it up. Okay? So let's talk about its properties. So when you think of mullein flowers and arnica flowers, they're incredibly analgesic and soothing. And so when the mullein flowers and the arnica flowers come in contact with red, hot, inflamed, swollen, infected tissue. It helps soothe that and help release the pain with their analgesic properties. So being in contact with it is really important. Another thing about arnica flowers, which is really good to know, is that arnica improves circulation. And so that means it improves blood flow to this area. And if you're having an ear infection, that means you have inflammation and you have congestion. And that means things are not flowing and moving and circulating really well. So when you improve the blood flow to that area, you're promoting your body's own ability and its own immune system to protect itself and to, to fight that infection, right? and to carry out the waste and remove that congestion. So it improves circulation. And then the strong antimicrobial and antibacterial properties of coptis root, along with the garlic, those two herbs can kill bacteria on contact. So it's really essential that the oil is in the right place so it's touching the infected areas to help relieve the pain and to help fight the infection locally and topically. I do want to say one thing, you know, when you're looking about and researching 
about earaches and herbs, right off the bat, you're gonna see golden seal come up all the time because golden seal is an incredibly potent antimicrobial and it's an incredibly potent decongestant. So it's perfect for this situation. However, golden seal is on the endangered plant species list. And so we're not gonna do that. We're protecting, we're preserving, we're being stewards of herbal medicine so we can have it for a long time, right? And we can work with it for a long time. That's why we turn to other herbs that are high in the same alkaloid, berberine. So this alkaloid berberine is what gives golden seal this beautiful golden color and its therapeutic properties, right? It makes it work so well. Berberine is also found in organ grape root. That's why we have it in our immune boost because it's, and then berberine is also in coptis root and that's why it works so well and we have it in our earache relief oil. So there are alternatives to golden seal. So when you read golden seal, when you do your own research, I want you to do your own research. You'll see that and then just remember there are other herbs that work really well and that's golden, uh, organ grape root and coptis root. I just wanted to give you that little side note. Let's go back to the earache oil. So you've just applied the earache oil, right? Now you can put a little cotton ball to keep the oil in place. When is the best time to apply the earache oil? Well, what really whenever you need it, you can use it as long as you need to space it out every three hours. It's great for children, it's great for adults. However, at nighttime is typically the best time and the most common time to apply the earache oil for a few reasons. One is that the earaches are more extreme and more painful and more prevalent at night. They pop up, they're more frequent at night. And at night you can lie down and the oil can be in contact with the infected site longer. And the longer it touches that site, the more benefits you're gonna get. So also, in terms of treatment, one of the best, most comforting things is heat. So hot compresses, meaning like heating pad, hot water bottle, or get a sock, fill it with rice, tie the end, put it in the microwave, have that hot compress. In my lung congestion and cough video, we talked about making onion poultices for lung congestion. That same would apply here for an earache for ear congestion. So once again, I keep referring you to those videos because it's gonna help this whole picture. You don't just have an earache. You have an earache along with a fever and congestion, along with food allergies, right? They go together. What other treatments? There was something else I wanted to tell you. That's really essentially it, except for those are the herbal treatments that I have. I did want to say, oh, I did wanna say one other thing. So their ears are really tender. They might guard their ears. They might not want to let you massage. If they do let you massage, you can gently do like a lymph massage to stimulate the lymph flow to the affected area. Or if they don't let you massage that area, you can maybe massage the child's arms from the elbow to the wrist. You do that 20 times. And that is a Chinese medicine acupuncture, acupressure technique. And that helps like increase the circulation and the flow and takes like all this stuff up here and it gives it some other place to go. It creates space. Like you can't just release tension here if there's nothing, if nothing else moves. But if you can release this and then release this, then this can go down, right? So massaging elbow to the wrist. Those are some natural remedies, right? Some natural remedies. Now the orthodox, the, the typical medical model of care is gonna be to heal the pain, or numb the pain with acetaminophen, to treat the infection with antibiotics. If that doesn't work, do that again. If that doesn't work, do it again, and then eventually do tubes in the ear, and then maybe even more surgeries. I know that for sure because I've been down that path personally. And, but I, I'm here to tell you, look, those things won't work and neither will these natural remedies work 
until you get to the bottom of the causative reason for these infections and the primary cause of these reoccurring infections that are going to require tubes and tons of antibiotics and require that level of treatment primarily come from food allergies. So if you're unsure if your child has a food allergy, assume that they do and start the elimination diet and talk to a care provider to get you on the elimination diet. That's what I really wanted to say about that. So I want to go back to the antibiotics because sometimes the antibiotics are really important and I want to give props to that because they, they help in certain situations. And knowing me, I also want to show the other side and just remind you of like how essential your microbiome is and how disruptive the overuse of antibiotics are to your microbiome and your prolonged health and vitality and your immune health and your immune system. And so we don't want to overuse these antibiotics, right? So I just wanted to bring that. And as I'm about to wrap up talking about these ear infections, I have this whole list of these like things to consider, things to remember. I just want to remind you right off the bat that yes, ear infections, take them seriously, treat them right away, look for the early causes, the un look for the underlying causes and approach them, right? That's the first thing I want to say. And at the same time, just because you have a perforated eardrum doesn't mean you're going to have prolonged or permanent hearing loss. Most of the time, eardrums can heal on their own without any hearing loss. Okay, so I want to put that back into that comforting back into your mind. I want to remind you another thing about earaches and just the nature of earaches is that earaches, like I said, hurt worse at night. So it's common, and I see this mistake happen a lot, is that the child is up screaming in the night, and then they finally get settled down, and then they wake up in the next day and they're just fine, right? And so that means that they go to the play group, that means they go to school, that means they go out and play at the park. And I'm here to say, really, please don't do that. That, that ear infection isn't, isn't resolved yet. And in the night, again, they're just gonna be sick again. So if that's happening, please don't send them out in the cold. Keep their heads covered with flaps. You know, the little hats, cute little hats with the flaps. No wind, cold air, especially no water in the ears. Even if they're bathing, put some cotton balls in their ears. Hmm. Then also, we already know that breastfeeding is going to help prevent these ear infections, partially because the baby is getting such immuno-rich milk from the mom, right, and has all these immune qualities in the milk, but also partially because, like we said, their ear canals aren't completely formed, and to breastfeed takes a lot of muscle strength, and it takes a lot of jaw and tongue movement. And for that jaw and tongue movement is what strengthens and helps tonify and align those ear canals so that they're strong and they can drain effectively. If you have to bottle feed at this point in time, try not to give any dairy, obviously, but then also laying them on their back and bread and bottle feeding might part might be part of the problem because when they're laying on their back the milk gets caught in their sinuses and then into their ears and then that moisture stays there and then bacteria grows so when if you have to bottle feed that's fine but just prop them up a little bit so that there can be some drainage and then maybe even after feeding just quick little massage quick little rub across the face and down the ears to get that moisture and that mucus and that milk moving so it doesn't st stay stagnant. Another thing is, you know this, but ear problems are more prevalent and more common in houses of smokers and also wood smoke and allergens and lots of animals in the house. That's important. Also, another thing I want to say is like teaching children to blow their nose instead of just wiping. So when they just wipe the snot across their face, which you know you know they do that, but if they can blow their nose and get the mucus out or cough and spit and get the mucus out, that's gonna really minimize these ear infections. 
At the same time, I want to let you know that I'm aware when they have an ear infection and an earache, they probably don't want to blow their nose very much because blowing their nose might actually pop their eardrum. So use that information wisely. I'm just reminding you one more time, be mindful to not put things in the ear to get it out. And pretty much there are a few other things I want to say, but this is essentially the last thing I just want to say in terms of ear aches and ear pain is that not every time that a child has an ear pain does it mean that they have an infection. So for example, you know this when you're traveling and you're traveling through the mountains or you're on an airplane and their ears start popping, they can have a lot of pain, they can be startled. They're not having an infection right then, they're having ear pain. That would be potentially a good time if they don't just settle right back down, you know, give them some gum or something to chew on or something to eat like carrot sticks to make them work. If that doesn't settle it down, maybe some calming nervines again that might help them travel and settle and reduce the pain from that rising of elevation. Hmm, I'm gonna take a pause. Is there any questions, thoughts, ideas? Not currently. Yeah, so I really want to just take the time here and let you know a little bit just my backstory. I grew up with chronic ear aches and ear infections and I had multiple surgeries as a child. A big part of it is just we didn't know. And as parents, right now, here we are as parents and we're doing the best we can. Your parents did the best they could with you, taking care of you, right? So there's nothing to blame. At the same time, information, new information comes in and sometimes when a child is having a chronic problem, that means something happening in your life has to change and it's something that you do every day right it's not coming from some rare thing that happens every once in a while when it's chronic and persistent and it's taking you to the level of surgeries it means there's something that's happening every single day that needs to change right so take your time to evaluate what that could possibly be in my case it was eating a lot of dairy we just didn't know we ate a lot of dairy, I lived on a dirt road, and my parents at the time, they've quit since then, but they were smokers, and they didn't know, and we played outside all the time, and all these things, they just tried their best, and they didn't have all the information. And at now, currently, here I am as an adult, and I can hear pretty well out of one ear, but not so well out of another ear, so I have really have had this lifelong experience of hearing loss. So I know this to be true. And I also know that I've had my son have lots of ear infections in the beginning when he was young. And that garlic mullein oil works quickly and well and effectively. And these, this whole approach of just the antibacterial, antimicrobial, the decongestion, the, the food elimination, the hydration, keeping him hydrated and applying the herbs is really an effective way, an appropriate and safe way to take good care of your children. I know that for myself and from taking care of other families. Before we go, I want to just call attention because we have uh, our new earache relief oil, I wanna call attention to it. I also wanna call attention to another new product we have that is our lung support tea, brand new. And what they have in common, and yet in common and yet different at the same time, is a plant called mullein. So when you think of mullein, think of mullein as the lung herb and the ear herb. I'm not to, gonna go into great detail because each plant that I cover has a whole history and legend and like a list of multiple ways that it can be beneficial in your life. In this topic, I'm going to keep it just in this topic right here. The leaves of mullein are for the lungs. The dried leaves of mullein are for the lungs because they're expectorants and they're demulcents. So they help you 
get the mucus out and they help you have a very productive and effective cough because you, you want the productive and effective cough because that's how everything leaves your body. Mullen helps with that. But then the mullen flowers, like I talked about, are antiseptic. They're vulinary. They're analgesic, right? This analgesia relieves the pain. And so the mullen flowers, their beautiful bright yellow flowers, are what's in the ear oil. And the mullen leaves are in the lung support tea. And they go together. And they can work together and, or they can work individually. I'm going to start to wrap things up and say goodbye. I want to remind you to go ahead and download your ebook, Herbs for Kids. It's in the description, and you'll just immediately be signed up for the course. I want to remind you that birthsongbotanicals.com is where you're going to find all of these products, and that we have free shipping domestic and free shipping world. No, not free shipping worldwide. We do ship worldwide, but not for free. And we're also sold on Amazon and probably in your local community and all over. So look for us. And if you're we are live right now, then I'm going to share this video later. So I'm going to encourage you to go to our website because that's where you'll see our other live videos. You'll also see our videos on YouTube. You'll find us on SoundCloud. We're, we're everywhere right now. Um, our blog, it has a lot of great uh, articles about treat, taking care of sick children, more articles about herbs, more articles about being a woman and being a mother and taking care of a family and breastfeeding and this whole time of your life right now that's really important. We have things to talk about and share with you and we're here to support you. And so my friends... We have a question. Oh, we have a question. Just in the nick of time. Plant-based magnetism is asking if you have any suggestions for tinnitus in adults because her partner has had surgery to patch his eardrum and has limited hearing out of his right ear. Ooh. <sighs> you know, I don't know. I, so, I have some of those same things. And so I would go back to the food allergies. I know it's not a total fix, because I don't know what caused the eardrum and the ringing, but honestly, when you remove your wheat, dairy, sugar, or whatever your food allergy is, could be corn, it really just helps with all ear types of infections. So I would, that's, that's really where I would start with, is I would go back to the diet before before putting the ear oil. I don't know if the, the ear oil, the ear oil can help soothe and might be helpful, but I don't know if it's gonna, heal the tinnitus like that cool great question makes me want to look it up maybe I'll, I'll think of something and I'll put it in the comments okay okay my friends this has been really fun and we'll do this next week every Thursday at noon and until then my friends always drink deep and walk in beauty